Hi, it's Alistair at Electric Scotland doing the introduction to my newsletter for July the 4th, 2019 and obviously um, happy July the 4th for our American uh, viewers. Okay, so uh, first thing I'm highlighting is a talk being given today. So if you're in Toronto, you might make it because uh, it's not on until 6.30 but it's about Douglas Gibson's show. Douglas is a, a, an old-time editor, was a CEO of um, uh, what's it, Scott McLennan. Uh, he was a big um, uh, publishing house in Canada. He's got his own publishing house as well now, and he's worked with very many famous Canadian authors. But um, It's, it's the kind of show that you could really get your teeth into and I would, uh, I mean the reason I'm going to give you some background information on it is that you could contact him if you want to arrange for him to give a talk in your part of Canada or possibly even America. Uh, so maybe if you're in Detroit or uh, Chicago, I mean he may be interested in coming down to give you a talk, 65 minutes and he says basically um, is it will continue taking his new 65-minute show on tour across Canada. The show features superb author portraits by Anthony Jenkins presented on screen by the wizardry of Doug's lovely and talented wife Jane. She also supplies bursts of music from the decade in question as well as iconic words, uh, works of art from the time, while well, Doug roams around shamelessly celebrating our greatest Canadian writers. Uh, authors celebrated um, in the show include not only predictable M names like McLennan, uh, Mitchell, McLeod and Monroe, all of whom Doug edited and knew well but you find unexpected authors with names like Aubert de Gasp, Connor, Gallant, Richards, and even Gasp, Leacock. There will, of course, be a Q&A session at the end, and heaven forbid, overripe fruit that may be thrown, <laughs> books will be on sale. So far, Duke has presented the great Scots show in Guelph, Ottawa, Montreal, Quebec City, Saint, uh, Saint John, Charlottetown, Antigonish, Halifax and Wolfville. Simon Fraser University has booked it for October the 26th and other bookings are underway. So, and to say the, uh, the one tonight is at the Toronto Reference Library at 789 Yonge Street. It's one block north of Boer Street, uh, 6.30 to 8 p.m. So, uh, I just thought you might like to know about that. And as I say, uh, as he's giving these talks, you might want to invite him to give a talk in your area. So, there you go. That's the information on that. Now, to the news stories I've picked for you this week. Uh, first one is, why an independent Scotland in EU might not be paradise, says an independent Scotland that rejoined the EU might soon discover itself at odds with Brussels on several key issues, writes Bill Jimson. Uh, the next story is a Queen celebrates the 20th anniversary of the Scottish Parliament. She was accompanied uh, for the ceremony in Edinburgh by Prince Charles who is known in Scotland as the Duke of Rothsay rather than the Prince of Wales. Um, next one is botched public sector IT contracts leave big black hole. Repeated problems with IT contracts across the public sector in Scotland have cost the taxpayer more than 250 million in recent years, analysis has revealed. And I bring you that story because it seems that we keep messing up but never learn from it. Just keep going messing up every time we try and do a project. It's ridiculous. And that's why I think we, 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 need, a, we need new 
I need a new government in Scotland, that's for sure. Then Jeremy Hunt picks Canada's ex-PM to join Brexit negotiations. Says the Foreign Secretary's uh, allies revealed in an interview with the Sunday Times that after uh, wooing Stephen Harper for several weeks, he is set to join uh, Harper and Canada for more years, six of which included negotiations with the EU for a free trade deal that was signed in 2016, the year after he left office. So, uh, kind of interesting. Uh, Boris Johnson slams the BBC's political coverage and brands it the Brexit bashing corporation. They no longer make a pretense of being independent and balanced, in my opinion, he says. And in my opinion as well. They're definitely a Brexit bashing corporation for sure. It's, uh, it's ridiculous that we're forced to pay to actually listen to their rubbish, basically. Kylie Minogue's tears of joy as she finally plays Glastonbury. Kylie Minogue uh, blinked back tears as she finally got to play Glastonbury's Pyramid Stage, 14 years after cancer forced her to cancel a headline slot. Then this Canada let us commit to our cousins across the Atlantic. The CanZ UK movement is building momentum and should be taken seriously. 68% of Britons support free movement between the UK, Canada, Australia and New Zealand. The next story is Scotch whisky targeted by new US tariffs. I predicted this would happen a number of years ago. Scotch whisky is among the products targeted by the US for a possible range of new tariffs on imported goods. See, I mean, Scotland and Nicola Sturgeon is just an idiot, absolute idiot. She's very anti-Trump. She makes it plain with any time she opens her mouth. And, and you know, if we're going to get hit with these tariffs, it's her fault. No one else is her fault. And it just goes how stupid she is. You know, she thinks she can mouth off people and, they, and they'll just ignore her. Of course they're going to pay attention if she's bad-mouthing them. Stupid bitch. I mean, I'm really just but she's pathetic. Sorry, I'm a bit annoyed at her, really, as you can probably tell. Exposing the truth about Scottish exports. Sorry, but we need to talk about Scottish exports. <laughs> and we really do. You get it. It's very interesting uh, article that shows you where our exports go in the world. The next one is Labour panic over a poll putting it in fourth on a record low of just 18%. Growing discontent on Brexit position and leader stands on anti-Semitism. Then the final story is damaging discrimination at the core of SNP medical student policy. On Monday, at the start of the first week of the Holyrood recess, when the Scottish Government hopes no one will be looking, we learned that medical students who come from the rest of the UK and who want to apply for undergraduate courses at Scottish universities will find their chance greatly diminished. Okay, so that was the new stories I picked for you this week. Um, then on to Electric Canadian. Uh, the Canadian Horticulturalist, I've got volume 33 up, 1910. Um, the Canadian Indian, I've got volume 1 up, October 1890. From what I've been able to discover, this is the only volume that was printed. So guess it didn't get more support, though there were ambitions to double the size of it. But you can read this first edition, and if you happen to learn that there's more editions, do let me know. Uh, Canadian Forestry Journal. 
I have a volume 50 here for you to read and on our magazine page you'll find a link to another nine copies on the Internet Archive. Then I found this Mont Hale is starring in Pioneer Marshall, a hard riding, hard shooting western movie in comic style PDF format, which you can read at. And I give you the, the link to the PDF file. Uh, clearly, it's like a, a comic script that they did, but clearly, it ended up being a movie. So I just thought it's a bit unique. Haven't seen it done like that before, so thought I'd let you have a a go at it. I had to unpick it, it was actually very faint, so I unpicked the whole thing, uh, updated all the JPEGs and then resaved it, so it's a bit bigger than it was edition, but at least it's clearer. Uh, then Toronto Historical Descriptive and Pictorial by Alexander Fraser, done in 1899. So I've got a good portrait of the city back at that days. Okay, now in Electric Scotland, I've got Best Newfangled Family Tree up. Um, with a, She's doing a wee uh, chatty news bit to introduce these issues, so I'm now giving you that for you to read in the newsletter. Uh, the Monastic Annals of Teviotdale, uh, or, or the History and Antiquities of the Abbeys of Jedburgh, Kelso, Melrose and Dryburgh by the Reverend James Morton, B.D. It was produced in 1832. And then I found this, A Yacht Voyage to Norway, Denmark and Sweden by W.A. Ross, Esquire. It's a second edition. It was produced in 1849. So from a Scotsman's point of view, it's kind of interesting to follow along on their travels. Then uh, Paisley, a local sketch from Valentine's Manual for 1863, uh, a very to a Scots in America section. Which, uh, basically, Paisley is in New York State, basically. So I thought you might find that interesting because obviously it was populated by a lot of uh, weavers from Paisley in Scotland. Uh, I might add, I also provide a link to other copies of that uh, Valentine's Manual. Um, so I, I put a link to the uh, on our Paisley page for that. Okay, I've got the Pennsylvania Magazine of History and Biography. Uh, I put Volume One up, uh, which was produced in 1877. It says Samuel Morton, the father of Robert Morton, whose diary is here given. Uh, as the first article, was a merchant of Philadelphia, the son of James Morton of Aberdeen, Scotland. And uh, there's another 196 issues of that magazine. This can be viewed in the Net Archive. And I've given you a link uh, to this page, uh, on this page, to 2,109 articles from the GS, JSTOR collection of articles in these volumes. So I've given you a link to that as well. Tons to read if you want to follow that up. There's, there's really a lot of very good history on America. And of course, especially in the early days, there are tons of Scots mentioned throughout all these historical articles because there were tons of Scots in those days. <clears throat> I've got Diary of Sir Archibald Johnson Warrison up from the Scottish History Society. Uh, basically, I, I always found old diaries to be really interesting because you get a feel for the, the people of the day and what's happening socially as well. And then I've got the Scottish Society of Louisville. Uh, someone emailed me um, a copy of the July 2019 newsletter, which I read and really enjoyed, I have to say. And so I've added uh, that to the site, the July issue, and I've added links to older copies for 2019 because it's a monthly publication. So uh, you might like to subscribe to it or join the society uh, to get regular copies. And then Lyric Fancies is uh, another one I've got up. 
It's the Rhymes of a Farm Servant by Robert W. Blackie, produced in 1900. So interesting, considering his background, I thought he might introduce some of his wee poems and stuff. And then finally, The Physical Geology of Great Britain. This is a, a manual of British geology for the late Sir Andrew C. Ramsey. Uh, he was Director General of the Geological Survey of the United Kingdom with a geological map printed in colour with uh, a sixth edition edited by Horace B. Woodward of the Genealogical Survey in 1894. Um, basically, I've added a link to that book from his page that I have up uh, for him in our, uh, our uh, special Scots page. And then the story. I've done a wee departure this time because this is like a 12 hour course that you might want to take. Um, I see there's an interesting free course that is more pro-remain in my view but nonetheless of interest and may help some to understand what Brexit is all about. They say this will take 12 hours of study but it can go much quicker. So, from Brexit to the breakup of Britain is what is entitled. So this free course sets the experience of Brexit in the context of the UK. It first analyses Brexit as a symptom of the political, economic and social geography of the UK, focusing on its uneven development in a country increasingly dominated by London and the southeast of England. It then considers how the divisions within the UK, within England as well as between England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, were reflected in the voting patterns of the 2016 referendum. Finally, the course reflects on the implications of these short-term and long-term trends the UK's future as a multinational state. Uh, I've given you uh, one of the reviews on the course which tends to suggest it's uh, remain oriented as most universities um, and the BBC, because the BBC come into this, are pro-remain. So you have to take it that this is from a, a pro-remain background uh, so whether you can say it's free of bias, I'm not sure. But I, I did the first few hours of it myself and I, I got quite a bit from it. So I thought I'd make it available to you. Um, it says after studying the course, you should be able to identify the geographical patterns of voting uh, expressed in the 2016 referendum particularly as reflected in regional outcomes within England and differences across the territories and nations of the UK, England, Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales. You should be understand the underlying processes of uneven development that help to shape uh, these um, patterns and in particular understand how the development of the London city region affects patterns of development elsewhere in the UK. Also understand how the UK is constituted as a state and how that has been affected by the referendum vote and the move towards Brexit. <coughs> then you should be able to assess the role of nationalism and national identity in the context of the nations and territories that make up the UK and uh, use and interpret a range of statistical data including survey data, interpretive maps, and understand the significance of the different ways in which they may be put together. And it's also given you a link to a Brexit hub on the Open University, because this is collaborative efforts say, between the Open University and uh, the BBC. So, um, I just thought I'd give you that course. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything. You can do it online and uh, I downloaded the PDF of it. When you work with the PDF, the links don't work for the videos. 
That's why you might want to just do it online and perhaps bookmark it as you go through it. But the options are all there for you. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, as I say, July the 4th, a big holiday weekend in the States, and we'll see how Trump gets on with his um, big uh, army and, and, and Air Force fly past and stuff like that. Should be interesting to see, because I don't think they've done it before. So, interesting. It's been portrayed as a partisan act, of course, but I don't know. I mean, Trump seems pretty okay for uh, being uh, all for the USA, so... I reckon he's probably just being patriotic, but of course, depending on your uh, point of view, you'll either see he's being partisan or patriotic, whatever. Okay, so there you go. That's uh, what I've got for you on the newsletter for this week. I might just add that I got some new batteries for my camera. Usually batteries last for four or five videos, then they need to be recharged. But I was in getting a new battery for my car and I went to Battery Boy in Chatham here, who specialised in batteries. And um, they said they've got these lithium uh, AA batteries. So, and, and the girl said, I've got to say it. And she said, they've been working in my camera for two years and I've still to, 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 to run out of power on them. So I thought, well, I think for $3 I bought a pack of uh, four of them. So. We'll see how long they last. I'll let you know if they're any good, and if they are, you might want to try them yourself. Okay, thanks for this thing, and as always, look forward to getting any comments from you, and uh, hope you all have a good weekend when it comes. Thanks. Thanks for this thing. Bye-bye.